Hello everybody, it's OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy, and I am here to let you know more about the BS that happens in our industry. I know you see that a lot from me, but you know what? I have no vested interest um, tied in and no in cahoots with the uh, magazines nor any other manufacturers. I am solo rogue OCD Mikey, and um, I'm here for the people. Long live the people. Um, anyways, for real. Um, what I am going to talk to you about tonight is just a little bit about getting um, misled. Okay, I have a few things to tell you and make a few things straight so you understand the way things work. Okay, and it's kind of like what's happening in the world today is uh, very similar. We can we can shrink it down and say what's happening in hi-fi. Okay, is very similar in that you want to ask yourself, you know, who gives a crap about me, the audiophile? Okay, so I'm coming into this and I'm an audiophile and I'm trying to, or, or a wannabe audiophile, um, and I'm coming into the hobby and I want to find out the truth, right? I want to look into it. I want to learn about it. I'd like to just determine what's going on here. Um, I'm going to go, if I don't know any better, I'm just going to go to the internet. I'm going to type it in. I'm going to get stereophile. I'm going to get hi-fi news. I'm going to get the most marketed um, hi-fi media outlets that are going to come first in, on the page, okay? So naturally, you're going to gravitate to those, and you would because they've been around for so long, okay? If you look at Stereophile the way it was the day it came out, the way it was three years to five years into it, and the way it is now, completely different, okay? Completely different. At the very beginning, it was about the people. It was about us. It was, it was audiophiles. Now it is, couldn't be further from that at all. Now it's about supporting the people that support them, okay? A magazine survives mainly on its advertising. That's where the big bucks come in. Advertising dollars, okay? So the magazine is going to take care of its advertisers. It's not going to take care of your interest, okay? It's going to take care of the advertiser's interest. What is the advertiser's interest? The advertiser's interest selling their damn product, okay? If their product is a POS, it didn't come out the way it was supposed to. Let's say they made a mistake in the manufacturing. Something just didn't quite come out the way we wanted to. Do you think they're going to remake it, scrap it, and remake it before they sell it to you? Hell no, they're not. They're going to sell you the POS, the thing that didn't quite hit the bar. They're going to push it to you because, damn it, that's where they put their money, and that's where they're going to recoup their, their profits. Okay? So I think you should first of all get it straight that the magazines out there and the media that's out there regarding hi-fi does not give a shit about the end user, okay? They don't care if your rig sounds good or not. They care about selling pieces, period, okay? That's the way it works. I mean, and it's honestly, it's the way the whole world works. When you go to the doctor, this is a really touchy one, okay? When you go to the doctor, does he care about your health or does he want to push pills or whatever it is? That's very questionable. That is probably the most touchy area because a doctor is supposed to really care about you before anything. And there are some good doctors out there like that, that they do care about the people. And there are some doctors that couldn't care too less. They come in, it's just a numbers game to them. They're in, they're out, and then they, and then they, um, uh, you know, and they're, they're selling their whatever pharmaceuticals for Big Farm. They're in cahoots. It's like, you know, it's crazy world, man. And, and it's really become increasingly harder to find out who gives a shit about you and what you're trying to do. Very few companies do. Um, more people will as individuals, but corporations, really, they do not care about you um, as a person, as, a, as an end user, you know, whatever it is, okay? Let's get that. Let's get that through everybody's thick noggin. Okay, so let's let's think about that. Then the support vehicles that support these industries are going to be the same way. Okay, so in other words, um, here's a perfect example: the damn Tambaki. Okay, totally mediocre DAC. Okay, it's okay. Look, I have DACs that I got three DACs right now that whoop its ass. Okay, and so, uh, I'm trying. I've got one client that, but that's his only DAC. Trying to figure out how do I get it here. So I can prove to you guys, 
because right now the media is pushing Tambaki, okay? They're all pushing a thing, oh, Bruno Pazzi's Mola Mola. It's a fun name to say, Mola Mola. Tambaki, what a fun name to say. It's fun, it's catchy, it's neato to say that name. Do you have the Mola Mola Tambaki? Ooh, it just rolls off the tongue, okay? So who cares, man? But this, these are the little things that make it into marketing and make it into the psyche of the buyer. The name is brilliant. That is a great name. I love to say it, okay? A lot of, I don't even know where Tom, but Mola Mola, it's, I, th I thought it was Italian or something like that. None, none, nonetheless, the name is so cool and it's fun to say. I love to say it, okay? But it's not the best. And people are thinking, you know, Steve Gutenberg, oh, the best thing I've ever heard. You know, it's like, oh, well, you haven't heard shit then, Holmes. Um, and you looks like you have heard a lot, but you, he's playing to the damn manufacturers, man. That's all there is to it, okay? Bruno Putzis is like an okay designer. He's good. He's prolific. He designs a lot of shit good. He does not design any one thing at the top of his freaking game, okay? I find the design... I'd much rather have a designer that designs one damn thing that is at the top of the game than to pick a designer that designs everything and is kind of eh, so-so and mediocre at everything. Bruno Putzis is the mediocre at everything guy, okay? I choose, handpick different guys for different things. There is no one person that makes everything awesome. There is, it does not exist. It's impossible. You need to specialize on something to make it the best. And you know this. It's with any industry. You need to specialize, okay? And that's how you find the best. I know who's best at Class AB amplifiers. That's Jeff Rowland, okay? As far as I'm concerned, there is no more advanced Class AB amplifier in the world than Jeff Rowland amplifiers. You just try and find me one, okay? He actually uses, funny as, as it is, Jeff uses some Bruno Putzi stuff in his uh, Class D designs, okay? Jeff does the front end, and then the back end, the, the module for the, for the Class D is done by Bruno in some of his designs, okay? But the stuff, that, uh, the, stuff I, the stuff that I cherish, really, as Jeff Rowland, is the 100% Class AB designs, because that's 100% Jeff Rowland imbued into that product, okay? Now, this is a, a, a giant amp that's heavy that, uh, that has... 325 watts per channel that does not have a transformer in it, okay? Read my words. Switching mode power supply in the best Class AB amp I've ever heard in my life, okay? So take that uh, to, to, to mean something. There are no rules that are finite. There's no definite absolutes other than there isn't one guy that does everything great. Jeff does Class AB. He doesn't design Class D designs. That's why he doesn't do it. Alberto, AGD, he designs Class D designs. He doesn't do, I mean, he probably could do an analog uh, uh, preamp or whatever, but he focuses in one area, okay? His Class D designs are the best. They're better than any I've ever heard, okay? Um, you know, and I could go on and on. I have two, there's two guys. There's, there's digital guys. Mainly it's digital and analog guys. People specialize in what they do best. That's all there is to it. So let's just have that realization, that come to Jesus sort of thing, that look, okay, there is no one guy that does everything great, okay? Um, there is one guy, there, there, there will be one guys that do everything good or okay, and they're, they're hey, they can make a whole, a whole line of product all on their own, that's great, and that's what they do, that's their thing. There's nothing wrong with it, that's the other thing too. When I'm sh telling you this, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not shitting on Bruno Putzis. You, so many people are just, they just don't listen, man. I'm not shitting on Bruno Putzis. I'm telling you where he is the best. He is the best at doing a bunch of shit, okay? That's where Bruno, that's the hat that he wears. He can design across the line and do it all evenly, just as good. They all together, they're, they're, at, a, they're at this level, okay? But then if you want to really get picky and you want to use the words like best of class and things like that, um, Bruno's not best of. Bruno is prolific. He goes across the, that's his main thing. And I'm not saying he's shitty. I'm saying the guy is good at one thing, and he does everything. Chef Roland, on the other hand, does not do everything. He, he can design and, and put together a Class D using a module, but he does not design the Class D. He doesn't, for whatever reason, he doesn't want to do it. Let's just say. I don't know. I could ask him. Probably just another thing he doesn't. He wants to stay where he is, where he feels his calling. And I've never seen a, a, a more advanced Class A B than Jeff Roland, because that's what he focused on. Class A B amplification, okay? 
Let's go to DAC. You know, I mean, there's going to be different somebody for DAC. Jeff doesn't create a DAC. He hires a, a, a guy who's a DAC genius. That's the smart thing to do. So anyways, let's realize that first. Okay, let's realize that first. Another thing to realize, and I'm using the Tambaki as an example, okay? Um, you know, people are saying, oh, it's the greatest thing and it's the best and, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, okay, let's look at why is right now, okay, let's, let's also look at this. Right now, the media is pushing Tambaki. They're pushing it. Okay, I had my time with it two years ago. Two years ago, I listened to that. It was, it was in between, it was a year and a half ago. It might even, let's see, it was uh, January... So it was a year and a half ago. So it's a year and a half ago. Um, I had my time with, with Tambaki, Mola Mola. And someone sent it, a someone, one of my clients who has a Rachna um, of mine that I sold him at the time was a Rachna Wave Dream Signature Balance, top of the line Rachna. And someone thought they were going to sell him a, a Tambaki um, and, and, and it was going to be better. He couldn't stand it, man. He was just like, he couldn't sell the Tambaki fast enough, you know? This is a guy who's into opera, um, um, more, or, or, I'm sorry, classical, more than anything. He won't even sit and listen to pieces of classical. He sits and listens to the front, to the back. That's like how he listens to it. He's going to spend whatever time it is to listen to the whole piece. That's how he taught me to listen, too, to classical music. And, um, and he is a big um, Mahler fan. And uh, Tambaki could not hold a flame to the Rachna, okay? Um, so two years ago, I'm playing with this thing and, and, and determining and vetting it. And now here it is, uh, or a year and a half rather. Now it's a year and a half and, and, and it's becoming popular, okay? Denifrips Terminator. I was the sole importer of Denifrips Terminator four years ago. Okay, people are now learning about Terminator and like over the last year. I was on it four years ago, okay? I'm ahead of the curve because I do this for a living and I keep my eyes and ears and antennas open on anything that might be hitting the radar as, as, as good. It might be the next thing. It might be whatever. I'm very adept at keeping my eyes and ears, my ear to the ground and my eyes open, okay? So you can bet when new things come into my hands that I'm offering, it's things that either have not been realized, okay, or they, they, haven't, they have not been... When I say have not been realized, it means maybe in other parts of the world they're hailed, but in the United States somehow they've had misrepresentation or underrepresentation, and they're just not known about. I find them. I, I will pan, pick, and choose, and bring them to, to, and I will only bring. Let me. I will only bring the best. What I'm going to say is, let me tell you a little bit about me, okay? If you ask any of my friends, anybody that's close to me. They will tell you that they make fun of me because I'm like snobby in every freaking thing that not not to people, but in, in, in the way that I choose man from food to my damn blue jeans to my toothpaste to the freaking toilet paper. OK, whatever it is, I'm going to check it out, vet it, make sure that it's the best, make sure I'm getting the best for my money, because as a little kid, I was always just. I was skeptical about getting ripped off. I don't know why it was, but I just, it was, I, I called it gypped at the time. <laughs> we got gypped, you know? It was like, it was like, it's, it's funny. I guess that's a, uh, I didn't know it then, but now I know it's a turn, it's, it goes to gypsy because like evidently, you know, the gypsies will run hustles in Europe uh, back in the day. The gypsies are running hustles and doing all this stuff. Um, and that therefore you got gypped if, if, if you got it. So when I was little, I got gypped. I had no idea why I was using the term gypped, but, um, but we got gypped, you know, I was always trying to find out how we got gypped and tell everybody, you know, this is bullshit and whatever. I guess I've been a, a rabble pain in the ass for my whole life. But really, truly, I seek out, um, you know, I mean, a, a pen. I want a pen. I'm going to go look at Mont Blanc. What is Mont Blanc all about? Is it, have, is, is it really worth, you know, 400 bucks for a ballpoint pen? Um, let me try one. Let me go check it out. Oh, OK. So it is very good pen. This is like nothing I've ever used before. Um, and it's beautiful, you know, and it's 350 bucks. Great. I'll buy one. I've still got one for, I've had it for the last, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. A Meisterstuck, like a, a stainless steel, beautiful, um, um, pen. I used to get it because I wanted to whip that puppy out to sign contracts. It was like when I was doing sales where it required people signing contracts, I'd whip that puppy out and give that to them. And then it's like here, you know, they'd grab a heavy ass stainless steel Mont Blanc and they'd be like, okay, this kid knows what's going on. Um, he probably, you know, knows a few things. So people recognize quality. I've always been a stickler for quality. I'm a pain in the ass about quality. I make no short, short half measures, and I have no room for um, 
for people not doing the job 100% or not making the product at 100%. So I'm ultra picky, okay? I'm a pain in the ass picky. I'm not rude. Like if somebody brings me my food, it's not done right. Or if I don't like it, I'm not rude guy. You know, I'm not a dick about it, but I am picky and I do deserve uh, or expect to get my money's worth. If you're going to charge me a premium for something, okay, I have no qualms about paying for a premium product, but it better be worth that premium because you're telling me by that price that this is above average. Now, if that product is not or that food or whatever, the service, if it's not above average, I'm going to tell you about it. And I, you know, and, and I might want some, I might want it, you know, not to take it or I may want to return it. I may want whatever. But the bottom line is um, uh, I am a stickler for that kind of thing. OK, so I've been in this industry for 20 years and I do the same thing with audio products. When I go to a manufacturer that I'm thinking of carrying, they send me samples first. And in fact, many times I have to buy them and I'm, I'm willing to. I'll buy the samples, whatever, have them send them. And now I'm going to run them through the gauntlet. I'm gonna look at that thing with a fine tooth comb. I'm gonna turn it over in my hands and I am going to de determine the, the manufacturing quality of that piece quick, okay? And then I'm gonna listen to it. That, that comes first. Now that is a secondary thing in the grand scheme of things, but it's the first thing to look at because I haven't plugged it in yet. I've got it in the box. I'm gonna have it in my hand first. So first I look at cosmetic, then I listen to it. So if the cosmetic is not, you know, if I, if I can see there's some inadequacies in the, in the build, I'm still going to give it a chance and listen to it and see how it sounds, and then it can redeem itself, okay? And then when it's really well built, it's the other way around. Now I'm really skeptical. Now I'm going to say, okay, this thing looks gorgeous. It better sound as good as it looks because you're really making a statement about how good this thing is just based on how it looks, you know? It better sound good, okay? I don't like cars that sound fast or motorcycles that sound fast. Typical, a Harley, okay? just from the factory sounds loud and obnoxious now if you're going to be loud and obnoxious you better be fast okay you better have something that allows you to bark because if you've got a bark but no bite you suck okay and i'm not kidding about that kind of shit i ride motorcycles i rode a harley because i wanted an american cruiser and i rode a harley and it was a it was weak and it was loud as piss and it was weak and i couldn't stand it i said forget it I went and bought a custom. I got an SNS 111 Super Sidewinder carb. Uh, I mean, that thing rips. It's not only loud, but it freaking pulls your damn arms off. Okay? That's how a loud chopper or a loud bike should be. If it's going to be loud, you should have the boss to, to back it up. Okay? Same with Mustangs. Typical car. The things are loud as shit. Are they fast? Some of them. You know? Some of them not. They're just, they make a hell of a lot of noise, but they're not that fast. Take an LX Sleeper, for instance, the old 5.0 LX Sleeper. That was a fun car. <laughs> Got a story about that in LA. But um, anyways, um, uh, so cars, you can't make a lot of noise and, and be weak. You just can't. That's stupid. You know, these little rice rocket things are the little, um, what do they call them, like fast and furious things, blah, making all this noise. Boy, you better be fast if you're making that noise because you're bothering me with this thing. So you better be a race car, okay? If you're a race car and you can you can kill, you know, and, and do all that stuff, okay, so you earned being that loud, okay? So I'm, I'm very much like that across the board with everything I do. So hi-fi is no different for me, okay? I'm very skeptical about any new hi-fi and I look over it with a fine tooth comb. I've been a manufacturer of hi-fi. I have the ability to look at something and determine how it's built and, and how it sounds. So we get back to the thing about how do people get misled, okay? First of all, you're misled by the magazines and the main media that is the powers that be. Just like we are misled with the media that censors all the BS for politics and for everything else, the media for hi-fi is no different. It's a little less um, uh, vicious as the regular uh, media, mainstream media, but it still serves its advertisers. It serves that which is the flow of money. That's how things work in this world. Companies support their, 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 their blood flow. They support their money flow. It only makes sense. I mean, come on. It doesn't take a genius to figure out. If you have a business, you're going to take care of the thing that gives you the most money as long as it's a comfortable arrangement. I mean, you're not going to, you know, in certain things, you're not going to compromise yourself to, to get paid. Some people will, but, you know, I don't, and, and there are companies that don't do that. But in the thing where there's media and you're, and you're, and you're look, if, if, a, if a company has, let's see, a mediocre product, um, 
uh, and, and they are a top advertiser for a magazine. And they're, they're, that, that magazine, okay, Stereophile, whoever, they're going to they're gonna say that this product is killer. It's a great product, man, blah, 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 best I've ever heard, yeah, whatever, yeah, okay. Let's listen to it, okay? Now let's say we go and we're at the show and we listen to it, okay? We're in the Stereophile room, we're in the, the reviewers, wherever. We're in the room um, where the, with, the, uh, with the marketing company, okay? The dealer. And we go in and, and the thing that they're saying sounds so good. And we listen and we go, it doesn't sound that good, okay? Um, they're going to look at you straight in the eye and they're going to tell you, they're gonna, first of all, they're going to shame you for saying such a thing. They're going to shame you and then they're going to tell you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and you better, you, you don't know, you can't hear. Your ears are shot. You don't know hi-fi. Get out of the room and they're going to they're gonna kick you out because that's what happens when you have an opinion that doesn't follow their narrative, okay? Their narrative is this piece of, this DAC, this whatever, yippity doo da sounds awesome and that's what we're pushing here. And if you don't think that that's true, then you're totally wrong and you have shitty ears and get out of here, okay? So realize that, okay? You will be shamed. And so, so what happens is people that don't really know any better, don't know the ropes, they will come into the industry and they'll hear something and it won't be that great and they'll mention it and then they'll get pistol whipped by the, the guy who's running the room or somebody else that on the forum or something. They'll get pistol whipped for having an attitude other than what the mainstream narrative is and they're going to get pistol whipped and they're going to go, they're going to put their tail between their legs and they're going to think, well shit, maybe I don't really know what hi-fi is because that didn't sound that good to me and they were telling me it did and man, um... That's, that's uh, you know, you know this, this, this kind of suck. Maybe I don't know what's going on. Okay, this is the part where people that own manufacturers, like Ivana Manley said in the, in the video with her, she said, trust your own ears, okay? We're not telling you just go out there, just, um, uh, 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 you know, try and figure it out on your own. Listen and just what's best um, because you might first need to know how to listen and we can teach you that, the people that, that want to teach you, that want to teach you. Um, what we're saying is, if the manufacturer or the, the, the media says that it's killer and you listen to it and it's not killer, trust your own ears. It's probably not killer, okay? The media is going to tell you to your face that things that are not killer are. They're going to tell you things that are standard are the best they've heard. That's the way it goes. It's always been that way, okay? And that's not, it's, 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 so, so you cannot rely on reviews to buy your hi-fi from do not, I'm telling you, do not rely on reviews to buy your damn hi-fi. That's all there is to it. Because the reviews, especially the ones that are funded by the big magazines and those, those writers, they are going to coddle their accounts. That's all there is to it. They're not going to take care of you. They don't care if your rig sounds good. They care if they keep their job. And it makes sense, okay? I'm not even knocking them for it. I'm just telling you a truth, okay? So... That's the way the world is, okay? It's not ideal, and you can't trust the people that you think you can many times, okay? You have to look at other signs. Look at things like, why the hell do I do this? Am I getting paid for doing this? I'm not getting paid for doing this. Is this, is this, is this something I want to do on my Sunday night when I could be relaxing, watching TV, doing some listening to tunes? No. Do I want to be sitting here having to talk about the truths of hi-fi and all that shit? No, I don't, but why do I do it? Because I care about you. You know, you guys are my customers, okay? You buy Hi-Fi from me, so I, you expect me to give you the best. And I, come hell or high water, I'm going to give you the best Hi-Fi that I know how to find, okay? I'm not going to, I have no affinity to anybody. I have no, I, I don't owe any manufacturer any favors or deals or whatever. I'm, I'm just by myself, so I'm going to give you the real truth and I'm going to hope that you can see that, and I'm going to hope that you give me my, your business, okay? little side note here in that vein. When you go out looking for people to buy from, okay, and you're trying to decide who do I buy from. I buy from this crazy long-haired dude that talks, you know, negatively about shit all the time, and it's not all the time, man. Just trying to give you the goods, man. Life is not always positive, but I'm trying to tell you truths, okay? I'm a positive guy by nature. But it pisses me off when people are hustling in hi-fi, which I hold dear to my heart. This is like my, it's, it's dear to my heart, hi-fi is. Music, really. It's music. It's not the damn gear, okay? 
The gear takes second place. But I want the music to be relayed. I want it to sound like it's meant to sound. I want to feel the emotion. Or do I buy from this other guy? Also might seem honest, you know, because he doesn't really give two shits. But he's got a lower price, okay? Um, here's what you need to think of, okay? It's not just about the price of the product. It's about the support that you're going to get. Now, unless you are a grandmaster with Hi-Fi and you're just calling to get the damn price and that's all that matters and you need zero support, okay? Because most discounters, the guys that have the lowest prices, are going to give you zero support. Just try and ask them. All you need to do is ask them, how does this one compare to the other one? And watch them fumble. They, they might tell you they don't even know if they're honest. Otherwise, they'll make some shit up. But if you're a hi-fi person, it takes two seconds to determine if somebody really knows what they're talking about. And if you ask them, are you an audiophile even? Or is this just a, a, a job for you? They'll say, this is more so just business for me. You know, um, I mean, if they're honest, they'll tell you that. And I had somebody tell me that. He was, he was honest. And I had to honor the guy. I mean, he was, he was, he's my competition, really. And, uh, and, uh, and it's a discounter. And I said, to, I'd start talking. I called him. Actually, called on a product because I, I, there was a, a used product that he had that I wanted to acquire. I'd been looking for something. I called the dude up and I was talking to him. It took me two seconds to determine this guy's definitely not an audiophile man. I can tell by the way he's talking about this shit. He's using super, super general terms. Uh, just would, you could say anything, any product you could say what he's saying right now to any product. So I asked him, I said, are you an audiophile or are you just kind of, you just do this for, for business more so? And he said, ah, I just do this for business more so. I'm like, all right, man, that's cool. That's cool. He was, he was honest to me. When he told me that, I'm like, okay, I honor this guy. He just, he just, he, he told me the honest truth. He didn't lie to me. But what I'm getting at here is that you will get zero support from those people, okay? Now, I, on the other hand, am going to take interest if you like, okay? You can use as little of me or as much of me as you like, but... If you want me to, okay, I, in, in, I automatically take an interest to everybody's rig. I want to know about your room, how you listen, how do you, how do you, you know, what's the room like, what's the gear like. The reason I ask all these questions is because I want to optimize the room for you. I want to get you something that totally kills it, that, that is just like every time you go in there, you're just blown away at how good it sounds. I don't want it, I want it to maintain that. That's when I know I've been successful, that it never gets old. You never get used to it. It's always so good that you're always surprised every time you go in there at how damn good everything sounds, okay? That's the level that I thrive to get you at, okay? Um, I don't want you coming back again and again, and you won't come back. I'm not the kind of person. Now, other dealers, they're going to want you to come back every year and get new stuff. They're going to want to keep selling you things, selling you things, selling you things. That's the way it works. I figure I'm one guy. I don't have high overhead. I can survive, and I can do well if I, get, if I, if I take care of people and fix your rig for life, especially you guys that are older, okay? Anybody that is 70 or above, okay? You guys are gonna get my priority, bam, more than anybody else because you've been at it a long time trying to figure this out. And I wanna make sure that you have that rig of your dreams before you pass on, man. I want to give you that. So I am going to bend over. I already bend over backwards, but you guys are going to get more priority than anybody because you're in a situation where, damn it, the last thing in the world I want is for you to pass and never have gotten out of hi-fi what you wanted to get your whole life. That is bullshit, okay? I'm going to make it so that when you pass, you're playing your damn hi-fi because you want to go where the music is. That's where I want to go for sure. I want to go where the music is, wherever it is. My hi-fi rig is going to be playing when I pass, okay? So nonetheless, um, I am one. You're going to pay a fair price, okay? I'm never going to sell you something that's overpriced. You're going to pay a fair price, and for that, you're going to get exceptional service, okay? So I just wanted to make that little distinction. When you're looking in the, in the, in the field and you're looking for something to buy, and you're deciding who to buy from, Realize that it's not just the price. It's also about what can this person help? Can this person help you get your rig to where it needs to go? Or, or is this person useless in terms of, of, of your support? And, and you just want to buy the product from them and that's all you can get from this person. So generally speaking, the ones that are going to discount cannot consult you. The ones that are giving you a fair price can totally consult you. Okay? So keep that in mind. Um, so we get back to the, um, the idea of 
the 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 you know being protected the the the, the magazines protecting okay so you can't rely on the hi-fi now the, on the hi-fi magazines the hi-fi media you cannot re rely on that to make your purchases okay um you need to find an honest seller that is going to give you the real truth okay and that's all there is to it um beyond that okay here's another one this is very important the forums okay here's something that is it is like um it, it is no longer what it used to be you look at the forums when they came out okay it's just like the magazines and you take it 10 years forward and now you look at the forums now they're not the same thing okay they're not at all the same thing your forums are cooked okay first of all first of all it's every bozo in the world that thinks that they know about hi-fi or wants to feel empowered will go on to there and bark like a little dog okay they're gonna bark 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 okay so we need to find out who's got the bite okay the most valuable people in hi-fi do not go near the freaking forums we won't touch them with a 10-foot pole okay let me say that again the most valuable people in hi-fi avoid the forums ask any leading does bruno putzi go on the forums does mark mark levinson i brought him on but does he normally go around the forum you ask him they will laugh and tell you that's just the trash hole you know i mean it's where people like like george hi-fi on 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 uh, on audio gone a complete prick douchebag okay just talk shit about everybody for for nothing okay he's like a cancer Okay, this guy just spouts off shit that, that, that has no relation to anything. He doesn't know anything. He just thinks he thinks he knows. And this guy destroys the whole fun of what was supposed to be a good time where people that enjoy a hobby together have a good time and, you know, talk about their hobby. Okay, there's trolls in there that love to, dis, to, to derail a good conversation about a good product. And some stick out more than others. I just named one, you know. I'm trying, I, dude, Audiogon needs to get rid of that dude. He is, he, is, he is the reason why so many people do not go on their damn forums. And their forums are retarded, they're ridiculous. Don't you think you can go on Audiogon and gain knowledge off their forums? You can not. You will be misled so far, you're going to be tied in a knot, okay? Not only that, they're cooked, meaning there's shills in there. Okay, there are people in there that have huge numbers of, of responding, you know, posts, okay, 10,000 posts, okay, those people, some of them, okay, I know manufacturers that give them product, and then these Pied Pipers go out, because all the people follow them, because they think they're protected in a forum, here's what you would normally think, you normally think, I'm in a forum, I'm protected because this is all my peers, and this is like not out in the public, sort of, I've got to be an enthusiast, and you've got to sign up and do all this stuff, so this is only the real people um, in, in here, in the forums. No, it's not true, okay? A while back, the hustlers, it's clear they're going to figure that out, that everybody follows the Pied Pipers. I call them the Pied Pipers because they're the ones that have more posts than anybody, and they have a whole group of lemmings that follow them over the cliff. And they follow anything this person says is good. Everybody goes and buys because they don't know any better. And so they're, 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 they think they're smart because they're avoiding the main media. They're not reading the stereophile shit. They're like, they're like in the forum, and they think they're protected in the forum because they're surrounded by peers. Man, it's been, it's been infiltrated, okay? You guys are getting hurt. That's all there is to it. Because there's people in there that are taking free product and that are writing about something, and then um, everybody jumps and jumps in, and hey, we just sold a shit, you know, a ton of these, uh, you know, power cords that have the line balancer right in the middle of it. Okay, there's a little sneak peek into a little drip of of, of, of truth there. Um, but people, they they come in, they show that they they design products that are designed for forum bozos. They, they the whole reason. Let's see, something like this that has a tube here that has a thing there. That would be perfect for the forum people. Let's do that, and let's do it. They'll go for it. They'll love it, okay? That's how they, that's how they come up with some of these things, okay? So you need to realize not only that, but then there's, then there's people. Here's, here's, here's a very insidious thing that happens in Hi-Fi, okay? You go on, especially on a forum, and you are telling somebody that you just found something that is really cool that you like. I just got a, you know... 
Romulus uh, aesthetics and you know and it and it sounds it sounds phenomenal and it's 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 really good. And then you're gonna get some bozo that comes along and goes, oh that thing that's been out for no 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 this many years and uh, you know is there do, does it even do DSD does it do does it do MQA you know um, and 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 if you say no oh that thing's done that thing's toast that thing's uh, man it's been it's been out too long it's it's on its way out okay. Nothing can be further from the truth. They don't understand that it's a modular type architecture. It can be changed, and the base of it, the main base, is solid, man. You can have that for 20 years and keep it going. It doesn't matter. Some of the other DACs have um, um, FEGA, and, and, and they're completely... You can change the whole damn DAC using software, so it's never going to be obsolete, okay? You can have for 50 years or whatever. You just keep changing the software in the DAC, but people don't understand this. They don't know this. So they listen to these other people. See, it's like this, okay? If you're happy about something in Hi-Fi and you're stoked that you've got something that you're happy about, there is always going to be someone. And it usually, unfortunately, it's the people that you talk to a lot. There's this jealous thing. They're going to get jealous that you just got something that you think is great and they're going to want to give you something of their, they're going to want to tell you something that they have or that they found that is better than what you have or that um, negates what you're saying about what you have because they just, it's just this insidious thing, this seething, insidious jealousy thing that happens across the board. But when it comes into hi fi, it's you're going to get it on the form and people are going to shit on whatever you think is great. Whatever you found on your own, man, I'm, look what I found. I found this really cool thing. And they're going to go, oh, that thing, <laughs> that's shit because of this, 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 this. So, and, and, and we come into this alone. We come into this solo, right? We're solo people pretty much that come into this and we don't know where to find our information. We think we're being smart by avoiding the mainstream media and we go to the forums thinking we found a smart place to really learn about hi-fi. And then we see these guys that have all the big numbers they've been posting forever. We figure they're experts and we listen to them. And a lot of times these guys are, 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 are on the take. You know, they, they have been sought out by those uh, manufacturers to, and been paid or in a given product to go ahead and have a certain opinion, okay? Um, nowhere is safe, okay? Unless you find somebody, you need to find an advocate that you can trust that's gonna tell you the truth. And when you find somebody that you think is, is the person to listen to, you have to, here's how you vet them, okay? Because if they're really good, let's say some of them can be really good talkers, okay? And, and if you didn't ask any questions, you'd be for sure this guy's an expert, okay? Because he sounds like he is, okay? What you need to do is a couple things. Find out what kind of rig that person has, okay? If they have a shitty-ass rig, they're, they don't know what they're talking about, okay? No matter what. No matter how much they read, you can't just talk about things that you've read. That's BS. In fact, it's not even allowed in my Hi-Fi tribe. One of the things that you sign off on and when you join the Hi-Fi tribe is I won't talk about anything that I've not experienced firsthand. I won't talk about stuff that I've read like, like, like I know about it, okay? Because that's a huge way that things get misinterpreted and, 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 and mis people get misinformed, okay? So you're gonna, the person you're trying to vet, you're gonna ask, you're gonna find out what kind of rig do they have, you know? Uh, how long have they been into this? Um, do they have another job or is this their only career? Um, um, and, and, just, and then you're gonna use your gut to determine, like, can I trust this person the same thing you use street smarts, right? The same thing you use to judge a person if they're, if they're telling you the truth or not. It's like an instinct, right? It's an instinct. You'll know if someone sounds like they're full of shit, they probably are. If they tell you these exorbitant stories about all this stuff, you different things and the cars that they've had and all these things and the houses they've had and the businesses they've owned and sold and all this shit, they're trying to get you to believe them. By telling you all those stories, they're trying to build up this thing to make you believe them. So... Normally, people don't have to say that. If you're confident and you know what you've done, you know, you guys don't know half the story of me. You have no idea because I don't sit and talk about it all the time because I don't need to. But when I need to, I've got stuff that goes layers, layers, layers deep that is just going to crush whatever you throw up against me. I'm going to be like, oh, no, sorry. Um, yeah, I was there in Korea with Mark, whatever it is, with Mark Levinson talking to LG on the 21st floor of, of the top brass of LG, you know, in my damn suit and uh, pretending like I'm a fucking corporate um, um, marketing expert, <laughs> you know, but whatever, doesn't matter. I've got a drive. I've got something that isn't taught in school. Okay. So I'm trying to give you guys 
I'm just trying to give you guys some sort of a understanding of how things work. You need to jump back and look at everything from a farther perspective. Don't get caught in the in the in, in what people are saying. Hey, look at that. That's you don't want to be the guy that hey looks at that, okay? Because you're the you're the you're the mark at that point, okay? When someone says, hey, look at that, you wanna you wanna go back and look at them and go, what do you mean, hey, look at that? Like, who are you? Why are you telling me to look at that? And and let me vet you first before I go look at that, okay? Because it's all about distraction, moving something. Look at this, look over here. This is shiny. Listen to this cool name, Mola Mola Tembaki. It's so such a fun name and cool name to be into right now. And that's what everybody's talking about. And let's let's okay, so that must be the cool one, you know. Um, sorry, yeah, it's it's okay, you know, but it's not the best you've ever heard. Um, you want me to prove it? I'll frickin' prove it, okay? I don't talk about crap I can't prove. I can prove to you I have three DACs better than Tembaki right now as we speak. And, and, and someone send me one, and I'll compare them online, and you'll be able to hear it, okay? Um, it's not that great. It's a weird-ass shape. It looks weird. It's not going to match anything else in your damn rig. And, you know, and, and so why do you think they're pushing it? Because they got a friggin' warehouse full of the things that people don't want because it looks fucking weird and it's not going to match anything, you know, and it's just an okay DAC. Okay, well, let's, uh, you know, let's push it. Okay, so let's get our little chimp who's out front. Let's have the chimp boy tell everybody it's the best thing he's ever heard. You know, he's got 200,000 followers. They're bound to sell at least 10% of them. You know, we should be able to get rid of it. Okay, this is how it works, man. You're gravely mistaken if you think they are looking out for you, the end user, and they really care about you getting the best performance DAC. Because it's always, it's, it's not, it's not going to be what they're pushing. It's going to be something else. And then you're not going to buy what they have. And they don't want that. They want you to buy what they have too many of, okay? So, you know, that's why I do these things. I do these things because I'm anti-establishment and I'm not about big corporations hustling the masses of people, okay? And that's what happens here in hi-fi, just like it happens in everywhere across. It happens in politics. It happens, look, at the. I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to shut up and not go over there. But um, it's not too hard to imagine that, yes, it does, in fact, happen in hi-fi, just like it does everywhere else, okay? So I'm trying to get you off on the good foot. When you find somebody that you can trust, okay, vet them out. Do they have, they're talking like they know about all this stuff. What do they listen to? I did that so many times and it, with, with reviewers because I, when I, before I started this channel, it was like, you know, I was like, who are these reviewers and, and what the hell is their background? And I'd ask them some questions and instantly I'd find out like, oh, they've got a headphone rig. Like, how the hell would you know about anything else than, than you, you, you listen to a headphone rig in New York City? That's all. You know, so you, you really don't, you're not an authority to even be talking about this shit. We figured out, another manufacturer and I figured out, dude, we are 10 times more uh, uh, qualified to be a reviewer than these guys are. Maybe I can't write as good, you know, and so it's not as fun to read these eloquent, you know, prose things that are just like, oh, wow, that's like a beautiful soliloquy or whatever, you know. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm more cut and dried and I'm rough around the edges, but you're going to get the truth because I don't give a shit, okay? I'm beheld to nobody. I am just my own man. I work for myself. Nobody tells me what to do, and I do what I want, okay? So, sorry, but that's how you're going to get truth. Truth is never the nice pretty thing truth always comes in work clothes that's what we used to say when when we were working opportunity opportunity don't miss opportunity because it's dressed in work clothes we used to say you know so um um you know that's i mean the truth of the matter is it's gritty it's it's real you know things that are real are a little gritty they're not smooth and perfectly polished okay so um anyways that's my service to you that's what i'm doing here that's my whole purpose here is to tell you you're not going to be well informed if you get your information from the forum for sure audiogon forum forget about it okay there's other forums that maybe have a little more truth what's best forum is good for those that are on the up, upper level okay because people just talk about what they have and their different things that one i don't see any i haven't seen any total show work in there audiogon's cooked i mean i've seen the worst things in there where they just come in and it's just like a fake post to about a product the next thing you know there's like 250 fucking, you know, 
things, pages of this, of people following, and, and it's usually a product, and everybody's jumping over the fucking, over the cliff together, you know, um, thinking that this is the, like, the best thing since sliced bread. And you need to have a point of reference. It's just regular stuff, usually. And, and there's a reason why it's being pushed, and it's because they got a lot of them, and they need to get rid of them, okay? So, keep that in mind, okay? Um, and, and do not expect to get accurate information from the forum, do not expect to get accurate information, even less, from the magazines. And you need to find somebody that is a good advocate, you know, that can, that can, that will, um, that will, that is on your side, okay? And just look at the guy and just look at and say, can I relate to this person? Can I relate to this person? Can I relate to them? Are they like me? Are my on there? Or do we seem like we're cut from the same cloth? Are we like on the same side? Or is this some, you know, suit wearing, slick tongue tie dude that's like, you know, talking at this level up here you know we're not the same you know that dude's trained to spin shit that dude is trained to close deals he is trained just to do whatever he's told to do so um keep that in mind and just i don't want you to get taken because i'd rather you spend that money with me than waste it with somebody else if you spend it with me you're gonna get your money's worth i give you that word as i am human I give you that word over my beautiful mother's grave that I will take care of you guys because I'm committed to you, the end user, okay? I will fight for you guys. I'm a little feisty, okay? You know I'm feisty. You know I'll fight for you because you can see it and you can tell it right now. <laughs> Rebels look like this, okay? They don't look polished. You know this, okay? So anyways, that's that. Peace to everybody. Rock and roll, have fun, and happy listening. All right, see you.